Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest IV. Last time, King Graham fell ill, and he is on his deathbed. So there's nothing left for us to do, but find the fruit that we've been promised is in this land that can save him. But to do that, we need to find the fairy's brooch. The fairy's pendant, talisman, whatever it is. Sorry, I've been playing Bravely Default. Anyway... So, here we are as Rosella. By the way, I, I think, uh, I hope it's for this version, but a fun little Easter egg you can do. If you type in a dirty word, perhaps you need to purchase a copy of Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah. So, yeah, dirty word. Fun. Immature humor. Yay! Let's continue. It's that unicorn, but we still cannot uh, get it yet. But we need to. Because we need to get close to Lolotte, and she wants that unicorn. So we can gain her trust, perhaps we can get close enough to her to get it. This is not where I want to be. Perhaps up north? Oh, hey, look at this guy. The scent of wildflowers fills the air in the lovely green meadow. He does not know how to play that thing. You see a rather jaunty looking fellow who appears to be a wandering minstrel. He seems to be a lute player. Not a good one. You say hello to the minstrel who looks at you in surprise. Well, well, what, who do we have here? He asks. You introduce yourself as Rosella. Hello, Rosella, the minstrel says. Let me play for you one of my favorite tunes. And he begins to play an old ballad. Unfortunately, it appears that his musical skills are quite limited, as he plunks and pings his way through an otherwise beautiful song. Um, ask me. Oh, ask. Okay. I I don't know. I I, I saw this in a little Easter like egg section for this game, and apparently this guy's name is Frankie of Avalon. Yeah, Frankie of Avalon. That might be a bit of a dated reference, but uh, I hope some of you will get it. We've got a house there, but I don't want to go there. Oh, we've got uh, Pan there. Look, Pan. You see a lively creature who is at the same time both man and goat. He is Satyr, and his name is Pan. He seems to be greatly enjoying his flute music. I want to deal with him, but I can't do that yet. Uh, so I'm um, trying to find... Perhaps I need to follow the river more. Or maybe I should follow it this way. Yeah, I don't have this place as well mapped out in my head as I do uh, other places in the King's Quest series. And I think this uh, world loops in on itself, like if you go far enough north, you'll eventually end up back where you were. Hmm. Perhaps... Here it is! That's what I was looking for. Numerous water lilies float serenely upon the lovely little pond nestled in these woods. Atop one of the bigger lily pads, you notice a rather large frog wearing a little gold crown. Ah, how adorable! So, let's, uh... Oops, you scared... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to scare the frog away. Oh, hello. I don't really think it matters. But anyway, let's, uh, if you know your fairy tales, then you might know what to do here. So let's look. Ball. So we have a gold ball, and in the fairy tale of the princess and the frog, she loses her golden ball in a pond, and the frog brings it back to her. So, ball to pond. You accidentally drop the golden ball into the pond. From atop a lily pad, a large green frog leaps into the water and it disappears from view. A moment later, the frog emerges with, yes, your lost ball in its mouth. It seems as if the frog is kindly returning your gold ball to you. Ah, how sweet. Pink. Up, frog. Oh. 
Not while you're in the pond. Okay. Pick up frog. Thank you. Squinching up your nose in disgust, you catch the large frog and hold it in your hand. It stares at you with big, bulgy eyes and wobbles its throat. You know what to do next. You look at the frog's green lips. Mmm, good. You feel silly doing this as you slowly put your mouth against the frog's. Suddenly, a little, the little green frog changes, changes into a handsome prince. Who are you? The prince demands. I thought you were supposed to be a princess. Why, you're nothing more than a peasant girl. You blanch a bit at that remark, but say nothing. Well, ta-ta, he says. I'm off. Here, you may keep this. To your surprise, he tosses the little golden crown to you and takes his leave. Good riddance, you think. What the heck, dude? Rosella is hot and she saved you, and you just walk away from her anyway. Let's grab the ball again. I don't think we need it anymore, but might as well. If you like, it's a King's Quest game. You want to keep treasures. And look, crown. Small crown. Uh, I'm going to save now and do a little something. So where? Crown. It's not a good idea now. Well, oh. Put on crown. What? I thought you could put the crown on. Ah. Uh, yes, I was wrong. Alright, so um, we've done that. We've got ourselves a nice little crown. Now what else do we want to do? Do Oh, I remember. Uh, let's not be here for now. Yeah, the place is fine now, but a little bit later. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. We get through the water and... Uh, look what we have here. See, I love... How like it zooms out in depending on where area you're in, so your character never like shrinks like well your character never looks too small or too big for the environment. I love how they did that. Like in uh King's Quest you often looked like too small for where you were. Anyway. It's the main room of the seven dwarves that it should be spelled with a V, dwarves cozy ha tree house. What a mess it is. And once again, if you've seen your Disney movies, if you know your fairy tales, you know what to do next. Clean. Yeah, as a kid, when I first got here, I knew exactly what to do. Because it just like comes naturally, especially if like, you've seen Snow White or anything like that. Remember, when we first saw the dwarves, they were not very uh, happy to have us in the mine. They just kicked us right out. But we're going to do some good for them. Clean up the dirty dishes. Jeez, how did these guys even function? I mean, I'm not the cleanest guy myself, but I, <laughs> I make sure my dishes are clean before I put them away. My goodness. So I guess Rosella, even though she's a princess, she hasn't been spoiled because she knows how to uh, take care of, you know, stuff like that. I guess she didn't have servants doing it for her. You watch quietly at the dwarfs file in one by one, get a bowl of soup, and take a seat at the table. So they're not, you know, asking questions. They're just like, hey, everything's clean. All right. And I always love this music. I love this music for the dwarves. This part takes a while, because all seven have to come in and get it. Yeah, it was at this point in Sierra's career that they had some of the best music, like, um... There's a... Like, a, let's see, Quest for Glory 2, they... Uh, a little bit after this game, so the graphics are like this, but a little bit better. Has some great music to it. Kind of reminds me about those uh, electronic Christmas cards that I put out last Christmas. That has that kind of same sort of sound to it. Yeah, Christmas is coming up again pretty soon. I'm not I'm not going to re-upload that video, but I'm going to like direct people to it somehow.
Oh, right, we have number seven here. Dolph must really be hungry. He's getting two bowls of soup. Looks like he's doing something else, but... <laughs> I already made that joke in uh, Have No Mouth. The seven dwarves seem very pleased that you tidied their messy home. One politely asks your name. You tell him that he cordially invites you to sit down with them and eat the bowl of soup he got for you. Isn't that sweet? Seat yourself at the table and begin to eat the surprisingly delicious soup. I think I just ate. I'm not even hungry, but these games always make me hungry. And yeah, you have to sit there and wait while they eat their nice soup. Yep. Without a belt, Rosella. Do it. <laughs> So, uh, one thing I do love about these King's Quest games is that you kind of have the, like, you know, inherent knowledge from, uh, you know, fairy tales growing up to play these. Like, if you were to bring this game to maybe, you know, some parts of South America or, like, to, you know, most likely most of Asia, you they wouldn't know a lot of this. Although, in Japan, they are really big fans of Disney, so maybe they would know. But yeah, certain countries, you know, certain other cultures, they wouldn't, you know, have these stories, so they wouldn't know. It's time for the little men to go back to the mine. And one by one they file out. So yeah, this, <laughs> this part takes a while, but it's a good thing they have some good music to accompany it. I can't identify which one is which because they don't really have their characteristics very well displayed. And of course they expect you to clean up after them again. You finish your soup also is the best soup you've ever tasted, maybe though you're just really hungry. Yeah, true. Have you even eaten like you were captured by that dragon and you were stuck there? Alexander rescues you, then the minute you get home, uh, King Graham gets sick. So you're left there crying, and then you're transported to this place, like, you were just rescued, like, what, two hours ago, something like that? And why should we clean again? Now, I don't think you get any extra points for this, but, uh, feels like the right thing to do. There we go. Better get a good reward for this. Food. I hope that's the last of it. Probably should have said that in a more feminine voice, but oh well. By the way, they did quite a job on uh, Rosella's bust size there, I must say. Something I couldn't help but uh, notice. I swear I'm not to, uh, to uh, <laughs> EGA girls. It's not my thing. That's why I don't play uh, Leisure Suit Larry. Anyway, now that you've done that... Oh, wait a minute, there was a... Uh, something I missed. Shoot. Because I remember what you were supposed to do, but I uh, completely forgot. Door. Yeah, if you notice, there's a little pouch on there. I completely missed that. Look, table. See, a long wooden table. You also notice a blue pouch. Take pouch. Look. Ouch. And it's, there are diamonds in it, so let's uh, go return that. I mean, I don't know why you want to return the pouch to the dwarves when, you know, the it is already in their home, which is where their property is anyway. But oh well, it's the good thing to do, I guess. So, if we... Climb on up here. Oh, <laughs> not that. Luckily, Rosella isn't too fragile. And we are in here with uh, that cool music again. Oh. But yeah, if you, uh... Now they won't kick you out, but if you fall like that while they're kicking you out, then that's when the bug happens. I might try to show that off someday. But yeah, let's give it to the guy in charge who seems to have all the diamonds. Let's look. 
I see busy little dwarves hard at work within the diamond mine. The diamonds flash and sparkle with, from the earthen walls. Uh, give pouch to... I wish the music didn't pause when I did that. Try standing in front of the head dwarf. Oh, well, I figured he could have, you know, turned to the side, but whatever. Oh, for the love of... And I know there's a way to, you know, repeat what you just said, but my uh, F keys have a bad habit of messing with my recording software. Get dwarf. Being an honest person, you offer a forgotten pouch of diamonds to the dwarf. His rough exterior softens a bit. Nah, you can keep it, he says. We got plenty here. We also got an extra lantern we ain't using. Here, go ahead and take it. The dwarf's gruffness returns as he says, Now skedaddle dad out of here. <laughs> Alright, but we got some diamonds, so treasure is good. And, uh, we also got ourselves a nice lantern, which we will need as an adventure game character. Uh, and we never had to come back here. Bye-bye, awesome music. And on to silence again. See how it's like... I just love how, you know, Rosella's back to shrunken down size. They just, they do such a good job with that. I'm going to gush over this game a lot. I love this game. They really amped it up from uh, King's Quest Three. All right. Um, I believe I want to go this way. There's now something else I'm looking for. There's going to be a lot of uh, fetching going on. What the? That was weird. See down here. What the? Oh yeah, I don't want to go near that yet. <laughs> yeah, there's lots to explore, but uh, you gotta be safe too. This game has a lot of dangerous spots in it, so you gotta be careful. Remember, this game actually kind of scared me as a kid, and you'll see why soon enough. Okay, I'm back here. Um, really wish I knew my. Oh, I didn't want to go there. Really wish I knew my way around here better. But that's fine. That's part of the game. Is exploring. You know, when you first get these King's Quest games, that's pretty much what you need to do: explore, explore, explore. Let's see what's down there. Oh no, no, no! Yeah, that. Did you see that coming toward me? Yeah, that is the scariest part in the game, in my opinion, is that freaking giant. Well, one of the scariest parts in the game. There's something else coming that's a bit more terrifying. But jeez, if I had gotten caught by that guy, I haven't saved in a bit. Like, luckily, it's not like previous King's Quest games where, like, they'll randomly come on a random screen to come get you. You pretty much know where they will be coming from. Alright, let's see. Let's try a bit north. I come across this place eventually. Ooh, I think that's it up uh, north a bit more. You have entered a shady wooded area with birds calling from the many trees. You notice a pool in the distance to the north. All right, exactly what we need. So you go up to it and. Uh, Nothing, and I think I actually want to go to the right so I can be hidden a bit. So this is one of those things where you just kind of have to exit and re-enter until you find what you need. Oh, giant's house. So exit, re-enter. I'm going to save because I keep going coming upon that giant's house. And he could be outside at any time. Uh, I forgot to... Is that... Or can I just wait... Yeah, you know, I think I have to like just sit and wait for a bit. And the beautiful pool with its elegant marble columns has a wonderful setting in these woods. The water looks so cool and inviting you're almost tempted to jump in. So hopefully if we wait long enough... And I might just have to skip to when the thing happens. 
Oh, there we go. I actually had to come from uh, the uh, west there. So I did that, and it came on the screen, and uh, look at what we have there. Da -da -da. Like Cupid. Cupid happily splashes and frolics in the clear water of the pool. Aw. Talk. Cupid. Be to Cupid, but he doesn't seem to hear you. Kiss. I forget, I almost forgot, but I want to do this more. You can actually use kiss on a lot of things, and it'll... You can't get close enough to do that, and it'll give, sometimes they'll give you some funny responses. Anyway. Come and splash on in. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. He's supposed to uh, leave his stuff there. Shoot. Oh, there's Pan again, but nothing we can do about that. Alright, let's try this again. This time, don't fall into the pool. Uh-oh, you startled Cupid. There we go, and if you startle him, he flies off without getting his stuff. See a little golden bow and two golden arrows on the ground by the pool. Get bow. What? I'm right there. All right. And before I end things off, let's look at my inventory. Lantern bow. Lantern unlit. Look. Bow. And we have our bow. So. We've gathered some more stuff. What else do we need to continue our journey here in Tamir? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play King's Quest Four. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.